Hello, welcome to Life Expansion. I'm Jason Stevenson and thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here today. For all those people that are watching live, I thank you. And for the people that are watching, not live, but still in this present moment, thank you too for being here. And today I'm really honored to have spoken just a few days back with, um, I've dubbed him the king of motivation, Tony Doyle. And we're going to be watching that interview today. It's only a 30 minute interview. Whilst that is playing, I'm going to be on chat. Uh, maybe Tony will join us, maybe he won't, but I, I know regardless, he's, he's left his print. Uh, he's left his impact because it's been, it was an amazing, amazing interview. And you know, even for the ones that stay motivated most of the time, I consider myself fairly motivated. Tony inspired me with his energy and uh, I know that you're going to get something from it and he's going to share some secrets on how to stay motivated or at least how he says how he stays motivated. Right now I'd just like to check over to the chat and welcome everybody and ask you guys where are you all viewing from at this point in time? Okay, just check over here. Hello everyone. Let me just spread this out. Okay, hello Jane, hello Giza, hello Nell, and Ginny, and Avea. Hey Garrison, how are you going mate? And uh, I think I've got everyone here. Paula, hello Paula, welcome. And Ginny, and April, Kat, and Shannon. And Shannon says, what will this live consist of? This is an interview, uh, I'm going to be hosting it at the beginning and then at the end of the interview as well to follow up with any questions that you might have. I hope that you're all doing well today. And where have we got everyone's coming from? We've got Dreamweaver, Atlanta, Georgia, Tammy, tuning in late. No, you're not late, Tam Tammy, you're on time. Athens, Georgia, USA, Florida, South Dakota, Go Gulf Shores, Alabama, Ohio, New York City, Devea from Melbourne, Australia, welcome. Welcome to you all. Love you too, Garrison, thank you. And uh, Orphan from North Carolina. Hey, Sue. And well, <laughs> my, <laughs> my, <I'm listening. laughs> this, my phone's just gone off and it's said, thought I said, hey, Siri. <laughs> Oh my goodness me. <laughs> oh, the things you get. He's, he's not sure that he understands me at the moment. <laughs> welcome, welcome to you all. USA is represented strong tonight, I can tell you that. And Los Angeles, hi Adele, welcome. It's great. So this... Um, this interview was, as I said, it was really inspiring. It's uh, 30 minutes long. It's, it's literally jam-packed with a lot about uh, Tony, his beginnings, and how he keeps motivated. And also, we talk a lot on the law of attraction, which is uh, really one of my favorite subjects. It keeps coming up time and time again. Because for those of you that know me, I'm sure you know that I believe in the interconnectedness. So it's not even a belief now, it's a, it's a knowing. It's a knowing of this, that everything is connected. And, um, and I like to share as much information on that as I can. So, <laughs> someone says, I love Siri too. <laughs> Mayam, hello Mayam, welcome. <laughs> so without further ado, I'd like to, Put this interview on and, and take a listen to the amazing uh, Tony Doyle and welcome him. And I'll be back on just after the interview uh, to have a chat with you. And I'll be watching the chat too. Thank you and enjoy and welcome Tony Doyle. Welcome to Life Expansion, Tony Doyle. Thank you very much for joining, mate. I appreciate that you're here. And uh, I appreciate you inviting me on, Jason. I love it. You're most welcome, mate. And Tony, I was thinking, um, when did we officially meet up? Now, I know physically we haven't met, but how did we meet up? How did we connect on social media? To well, 
Um, obviously, I mean, I've known of your sleep channel and some of those things. So I've, I've seen some of those things, but never really connected with you personally. I'm pretty sure it was through Ali O'Shea. Um, ah. She seems to be the she seems to be the main instigator nowadays around. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that, of, make, that <laughs> makes sense then, Ali O'Shea. Yeah, that that definitely makes sense. You might have been friends with her, and yes, totally get it. Totally get it. Well, yeah, I was I was friends with her. Um, it's been a couple of years through one of the law attraction groups online, mm. um, and we we started talking together. And I think already at that point you were a friend of hers, you know. So it kind of became a, a mutual acquaintance. And then of course we did the the consciousness creators project that's, together. And that's right, the consciousness January, creators. Right, so. Yeah, in January. Ali yeah. O'Shea, if you're watching. Greetings to you too, and thank you for the connection, yeah. Tony. <laughs> and and Tony, you know, I've been doing some little bit of research on you, a little bit of background work on you. Sure. And to be honest with you, I was really surprised at similarities that we have that I did not know. And I've just got a, a list here of a few of them. Well, first of all, I know that you work with youth and troubled youth, and I've worked previously with youth with disabilities, um, you know, Wow. Mentally, emotionally, I spent 30, 30 years of my life in the disability sector. That's amazing. I, I did not know that portion for sure. Yeah, well, listen to this. It gets even weirder. Music wise, now I'm, I'm not a hip hop artist by any means, <laughs> yeah. but 25 years of my life I spent in the music industry. And I was classically trained. Uh, I went, did the cabaret club circuit. You also I found out that your parents were both musicians. And yes. my parents are musicians. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Seriously. And we're, well, of course, we're both in the law of attraction mindset and all that sort of thing. I mean, you're like a, you're like a brother from another mother. Yeah, literally on the opposite side of the globe. And, you know, that's awesome. Exactly. Yeah, I didn't know the part about uh, you working with youth. I, I obviously did. Uh, I think I've done some some background work and like dug into your older videos and I've seen some, some of the things that you posted on there from when you were on some different music shows and whatnot. So pieces. Yeah. yeah, That's awesome. I didn't realize how many connections we had either, but yeah, I definitely feel that kinship with you though. So yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And uh, so obviously there's where the only, the major difference is we're on different sides of the globe, as you said, um, tell yeah. me about your hometown. What's your, what's your hometown like? And, and you know, yeah. Um, well, I've lived in Indiana most of my life. Um, I was born in a town called Bloomington, Indiana, which is home of Indiana University. Uh, so a lot of folks know that because of the college there. Um, I'm currently in Terre Haute, Indiana, which is about an hour north of Bloomington, which is where my parents still live in Bloomington. Um, but Indiana Hole is smack dab in the middle of the U.S., um, about four hours south of Chicago, mm. so right in the middle. But I spent a lot of time on the East Coast uh, as well, which is like New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia, that, that area. Um, yes. So, you know, so yeah. a, lot, a lot of people say you have, you, I have an East Coast accent, you know, and that's kind of where I fell in love with hip hop is in the in-between of that. Um, because I was born ba basically the same exact time when hip hop was born. So we grew up together, you know, so. <laughs> too good, too good. And here's, here's one thing that interests me, you know, you've got, you're in this beautiful t hometown and, and you don't, you don't really have to travel too far because you've got everything there. You're online with, you know, with right. so much stuff now. Um, it interests me as to, and you travel a lot now because I've, I've been watching, you know, you're going from, you do the, the Hay House gigs, you're going to the A-Fest, you're doing Mind Valley stuff, you're doing TEDx stuff. You've got one coming up in Las Vegas, you know, with Ali O'Shea, the, I think it's Manifesting Miracles, if I'm correct. Yes, yes. What, what I'm interested in is um, what inspires you to keep on the go, to keep yeah, I going to these events? You know, I really, I love it, actually. Like, if I, if I had my ideal, if I could set my ideal schedule and I'm getting to the point where I can, actually, right. I would be in, probably in Indiana, because I love the green, uh, at, at least when it's not the winter time. I think I might move somewhere else for three months, but, <laughs> but I would be four days a week, and I would be gone every weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. 
every so single one. You're that and inspired, hey? At this point, honestly. Wow. So, so yeah, I, I love it. I'm, uh, in, in fact, as I'm getting further and further into coaching and um, kind of further away from some of the hands-on work here in Indiana, and doing more global type of things like I'm playing of retreats and intensives that will be all over the world. So I'll be doing two retreats. So 2020 is what I'm working on right now with my business coach, uh, who's the, the COO of Mind Valley. He's my personal coach. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're working on 2020 and the, the products that I'm going to be offering folks. And I'll be having two retreats and two intensives. So the retreats will be for 50 people each. And then the intensive will be just six people and me like at an uh, exotic location for four day, a four you, day week working on stuff. So. You are amazing. And he, here's the thing. I, I'll be honest with you, Tony, you probably have to be one of the most highly motivated people that I know of. And that's, that's the truth. And that's across yeah. all the people <laughs> that I've, I've thus far met definitely i don't come i don't believe i've come across anyone as highly motivated as you and i know i know how much work that takes to stay highly motivated because it's something that we have to continually push ourselves with you know so yeah. can i ask you what what is your secret if you have a secret to keep that motivation going that work, you know that work going yeah. Well, I, I will say one thing as I've delved more into spirituality and kind of, you know, uh, in more of the woo side of things, as some people might call it from where I work, um, I'm Capricorn. So let me just be honest, like that's, that's you know, Capricorn, you're Capricorn, we're, we're both Capricorns. So Capricorns, first and foremost, are down, you know, they were down to earth. We're, you know, and we were about that. We're about structure and we're about getting, you know, getting those things done. That doesn't mean we can always do it. Yes. But I will say that my archetype is already to one to where that's something that calls to me. It's something that uh, is already something that I look for. You know what I mean? That's actually comforting to me is that structure and that um, some people would call it busyness, but um, mm -hmm. productiveness, I would call it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so you're you're yeah. in for climbing, just climbing that mountain, and I yeah, I, honestly yeah, I put a master plan in play. Like I've got a ten year plan, a five year plan, a two year plan, a one year plan. A, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I've I've got all kind of those things done, and it's pretty funny because I mean, um, a lot of folks in spirituality like what we do aren't like that. You're right. You know what I mean? Um, they're really not. And that's the, the funny thing is, is I, I mean, I do meditation twice a day, you know, I do walking meditation and I do two set meditations. So really three meditations, you know, um, I'm super calm. Like it's rarely ever will you see me upset or mad, you know? Um, and I take on, you know, with just with the job, with the, uh, with the youth here, I mean, I take on a whole lot of other, other burdens on my shoulders and I'm, I, somehow able to do it like it rarely ever overwhelms me you know and if it does it's literally just uh take a deep breath do some yeah. appreciation you know what i mean it's just like get right back into my process and then boom i'm right back on it so. sounds like that you've uh, found your calling would you say that i i would say that that's a that's a great way to put it I, and i think maybe that maybe that is the difference because obviously i've always I've not always been as focused as I am now, mm -hmm. even though I've always been as busy as I am now, mm -hmm. a lot more shotgun approach to find what I want. You know what I mean? Like Abraham says, yeah. you know what you want by knowing what you don't want. So throw that one out, throw that one out. We'll keep this, you know? So, but yeah, I mean, I, um, you know, still today, if I compare myself to a lot of people, it's funny that you say that I, I'm like one of the most motivated people, but, even within the coaching industry, you know what I mean? Like I, I get that a lot because lots of times people are as busy as me, but they're super laser focused on one thing. And you know what I mean? And I just can't do that. Like my, I'm a world changing visionary. You know what I mean? Like literally I, I see huge giant grand things Man. and I just go, for it, 
you know. So. I've got to tell you, I've got to tell you that, see, this is another few things that we have in common because I, I get this part about being laser focused and, and I, I can do that for periods of time, but like you, uh, there's grander visions and there's like, so I need a, a number of things at once yes. to, to keep me inspired, to keep that pumping. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. And, and it's not like I set something down either. I just shift, you know, a percentage of that focus to something else. So I'm still doing this and I'm still doing this, but now I'm like shifting over here for the majority of the time. And, you know, uh, it just works really well for me, you know. I'm happiest when I can stay busy like that, honestly. Good work. You know, I heard an interview the other day with uh, um, Robert Kiyosaki. I hope I've pronounced his name right. From yeah. Dad, Poor Dad, the author. Dad, Poor Dad, yep. Yeah, fantastic interview. And he was on London Real. Yep. Which, you, which I know that you have connections with now. And, I do. Uh, he, spoke, he spoke about um, that so many people today... Uh, uh, in something to see what they can get out of it, okay? That they, they want to get something out of it. Um, what's in it for me, me, me? People think, yeah. you know, many people think like that. And I loved what he said. He said, look, stop asking about what's in it for me, but um, ask the question, what does God want me to do? In other words, you know, what, what is my calling? What, what right. does God want me to do? What, what are your thoughts on, on that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it, uh, it makes all the difference when you find your life purpose, you know. Um, it really does. And, and, and it's true, like, like every, everyone wants to be comfortable, I think, you know what I mean? Sure. If everyone were being honest, we're in a, you know, we're in a, a 3D reality on an earthly plane. Um, money is important to what we do somewhat. I mean, we want to be comfortable enough. We want our families to be comfortable and Sure. be able to provide in those things but at the same time once you find your life purpose and your calling it's all about giving and service mm. you know what i mean and you realize that that money will come back to you everything is energy so what you put out you do get back you know what i mean so if you just focus on putting out the most you can you'll never have to really want for anything yeah. it'll come right to you you yeah. know you'll attract it back so it's a law of attraction and action you know yeah yeah and speaking of the law of attraction um so you work with youth and mm -hmm. aren't, aren't you in this amazing, like this perfect position. And I, I'm wondering about this for, to subtly drop hints uh, to the youth that you work with. And you probably do in, in law of attraction or certainly positive mindset. Oh yeah, you absolutely. So, so <clears throat> I definitely do positive mindset every day. I do. I mean, I introduce meditation, yoga, all kind of mindfulness practices, in, especially in my anger management kids. Because, I mean, as we've talked about, uh, even, even on, uh, on the Consciousness Creators Project, literally it's the best way. You know what I mean? If, if, you, if you can just become present in the here and now, all that anxiety of the future and all that stress from the past, it melts away into the present, you know? Beautiful. And to teach that to a kid, you know, who's 12, 13, even younger you know i've got kids at five years old that they're trying to give medication to like let me just work with them for six months you know what i mean and and let's see if we can develop some skills you know some life skills <laughs> so yeah i introduce all that stuff they they all very well know me as the law of attraction guy uh the funny thing is because of my hip-hop career everyone around here knows that as well so when i walk into a school because i do a lot of my work in the school itself when I walk into the school, they all know me for that. So they all, they instantly respect me. You know what I mean? For that. That's, so and, and, you know, and, and if they don't know, they don't know, but they have an ear for whatever I'm saying, they're trying to emulate already. So, so you, it, it definitely puts me in a good position for that. Yeah. You've got them on your side to begin with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. They're on my side, you know, so, and I don't, I don't change up a thing. I'm me, you know what I mean? I'm in, I'm in a button down and a hip hop. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm in the school system, like you know what I mean. I'm not, <laughs> they know me, and I'm wearing Jordans too. So, <laughs> <laughs> so good, so good. You you know you hear so many times about adults speaking about the youth of today and saying things like, uh, um, "Oh, they've got their their heads 
buried in their phones and their iPads and, you know, get their, you know, a lot of criticism. And yeah. the, the interesting thing is, who invented these? It's not the youth, it's the adults, you know, that have, that have invented these, that have come up with these. We've done this. Exactly. And, yes. um, you know, I, I saw this, uh, I was at a cafe a few months back now at a Thai cafe and I saw this two two parents and a child and they were all on the two adults had the phones and the one child <laughs> had the ipad and <laughs> they were waiting for their meals and the child actually had a question and went left the table went around to the mother and said you know mum ask the question and the mother proceeded to scold the child and say look get get back to your ipad just get back to it don't bother me and I looked at that and the father didn't move and he was still on his thing and the mother went back to, and the child just quietly walked around. Yeah. And this, it, it was a, a real sad thing, you know, and as I said, we hear this criticism of the children buried in the phones and yet we mm -hmm. are, in some ways, many people are encouraging this. Oh, um, absolutely. Are children today, and you work with them, are, are they as bad as what they're saying or is there something bubbling underneath for the kids that could be, you know, they're going to be life changers. They're going to change this world. What do yeah, you I, I mean, I think it, I definitely believe in like the indigo children, the, the crystal, like the, the generations that's coming up are far more advanced than we were in our generation or generations previous. Mm -hmm. Like they're coming in with more knowledge, um, more wisdom actually and i think less of a veil pulled over so they have less of a, a to learn and i think a lot of it is actually because of the digital era that we're in mm -hmm. so the work that we did you know as as we uncover how energy works and and all of these things like that becomes something natural you know between uh they say between the third trimester and age seven year old seven years old is where all the programming of your life is is introduced mm -hmm. well it only stands to reason that if we're introducing better programming you know what i mean they have better things to build from when they go on and it's it's completely true um i know a lot of the folks on this channel probably understand the law of attraction and, and those type of things but literally like facebook the algorithm is built on the law of attraction <laughs> it's built like begets like and Honestly, I've had I've had two of the founders of Facebook were at Mind Valley, and they they said they built it on the law of attraction, the principle of the law of attraction. So whatever you like comes back to you. Whatever you love comes back to you stronger. Wow, <laughs> whatever you comment sense. on or speak out comes back to you triple strong. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's built exactly like that. So and so it's just like on Facebook when people complain about what they're uh, what their timelines look like or how much negativity on there you put it in there just like you did in your own life law of attraction states you're getting what you asked for yeah yeah right okay okay this is it interesting you say this because i've just recently taken a break from facebook so maybe there was a you know a bit of negativity here from coming from me and it's like whoa okay this well, is bouncing back you know what it is also jason i think it's what just like in any part of life it's what we allow so a lot of times when we're influencers or we're online you know what i mean we want to pacify everyone so we want everyone to be able to get what they can out of our thing so we allow more than we should we don't put up a really strong boundary and because of that i think sometimes we're the ones that take the brunt and we get burnt out a lot of times you know uh, so yeah. i think really it's not that it's not that you were putting out the energy that was coming back, but you were allowing the energy to stay and build, you know what I mean? To the point where you had to make that hard boundary and you're like, oh, that's it. I'm done for a while, you know? <laughs> Thank so, you. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah and, I, and I find that a lot because um, in coaching, my business coaching, that's a, actually one of the main avatars that I work with now is um, like spiritual minded folks who want to take that into a business aspect. And I find that a lot. So the, first and foremost, they have a mindset that they're not supposed to be making money off of their passion or their calling. Mm -hmm. So that's the first mindset change I have to get. Mm -hmm. But the second is that they have to serve the whole world and literally be the punching bag for everyone and, and grin and bear it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
yeah. and that's just not the case, you know. So, uh, so I, I help them set up those boundaries that are good for their business, but still good for their mental health at the same time. So, <laughs> perfect. I mean, number number one, really, we, we you and I know that we have to take care of our mental health, otherwise, we're good for nobody. Exactly. You know? Exactly. The old serving from an empty cup never works, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I, I listening the other day, speaking about the law of attraction, I was listening to a book. Um, it's called the uh, A Course in Miracles Explained Easy or something like that by Alan Cohen. And uh -huh. this beautiful part about the law of attraction, you know, we know that we have to take inspired action, right? That it's right. life is not just about sitting on our bums and reading a few affirmations and expecting things to come to us. Of course, it doesn't exactly. work that way. And right. He, he told this story of one lady that had a passion for movies, you know, of this absolute passion, but she wasn't working and she always wanted to get into this. And so one time she decided to volunteer for the Sundance movie festival over there. Film festival, right. Film festival, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sundance film festival. Anyway, so she, she showed up there and lo and behold, you know, you get to meet people, of course, and people in the industry. And she got to meet uh, Robert Redford. Wow. And it ended up after she got to meet him and talk to him and it ended up, she ended up being his personal assistant. Wow. Now, I mean, isn't that like inspired action of just... That's perfect. That's, that's exactly what inspired action is, you know? just getting out there, enjoying it and, 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 and doing something and not knowing, but just doing what you love, maybe. Yeah. I think and that's what law of attraction is about, right? That's what it's about. That's exactly what it's about. You know, it's defining what that is, what it is you want. You know what I mean? Those things you love, follow your bliss. You know what I mean? So you, it's, it's, it's all of that. You know what I mean? And, and that's the thing, like it is about ease but work is ease. Work is play when it, when you love what you're doing. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, like, like me, like some people could sit and see what I do and they're like, I don't know how you do it. I'd be completely out of breath and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I love it. You know what I mean? If I didn't love it, I wouldn't do it. I, I would find something else to do in its place. It's not like I would sit back because that's not me. You know what I mean? I, I could never stay on the beach for a month at a time. I would, I, I would go crazy, you know? Yeah. So that's just not me. You I like just, to be moving and shaking and doing yeah. different things. And so you just need to be doing this and, and uh, you know, that one more step, one more step, one more step. Yeah. And of course you're being of service. You're, you're giving. Yeah, absolutely. It's always, it's always, how can I serve better or more, you know, mm -hmm. like what's the next bigger platform that I can introduce to more people, you know? So good on you. And speaking of service, I know that you've got, uh, something coming up with Ali O'Shea and uh, is it manifesting miracles? Is that the name? Yes. yes. Yep. In Las Vegas. Yep. So manifesting miracles in Las Vegas. Um, we rented out the stratosphere. So those of you who know, Las Vegas, it's huge. I think it's like 82 stories tall. It's, it's ah. like one of the biggest things in Vegas. Um, I think, so, yeah, we'll be I up there. You the best. You picked the best building for this. Didn't yeah. You? <laughs> Well, it, the funny thing is, like, that was our first choice. Like, literally once um, Ali O'Shea, for those of you who don't know, and I think you've had her on your channel, but yes. she's an uh, international law of attraction practitioner from Ireland. So she and her husband are flying in uh, for a week, and I, I talked her into doing this uh, workshop, um, and she picked Las Vegas because that's her favorite city in the U.S., and you know she did a little things and she's like it would be nice to do something with the stratosphere and I'm like well let's shoot for the moon let's go for it so we were able to book it and uh the, the rest is history so on july 20th we'll be there all day long 10 to 6 manifesting miracles we'll be going through all kind of different processes um Wait. just just really every facet from setting the intentions to to getting the processes to getting out of our own way uh, and uh, allowing those things to come to us. So, um, where can they get tickets from that, Tony? Because I'll put the link in the description here. Sure. Um, yeah, they can definitely go to my website for that. It's tonydoyleinspires.com. 
Okay, great. Click the link at TonyDoyleAspires.com and you'll see it. It's right there on the splash page. Just click on the link and you'll go right to it. Um, right. And that's in July, correct? It is July 20th. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's a Saturday. Um, so we'll be there all day Saturday. So it should be a great time. God, good on you. I so wish I was going to that, to be honest. I, I know. I, I still think you might pop up there. I don't know. I'm oh. going to put in the room. <laughs> uh, but don't worry it's 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 there and it's going to happen on our sense i'm going to work with you i know I actually it's like a no oh, yeah. so i know it's going to happen it's just that i i do too and i told ali that i'm like if it's not now it's sometime i guarantee you it's you know i could really see us working together on a tedx stage or something even you know so wow. i definitely think that's in your future and and i know i'm i'm i'll be going to the main stage pretty soon here good so. for you mate good for you i've just got one final question for you and uh, if, if right now there's some of my listeners that, are, that, you know, everyone, we all go through difficult times, right? Dark sure. times and, and hard times. And if you could offer one piece of, suge one suggestion uh, to help someone for the first step to get out of that, um, because, you know, Tony, there's so much, there's law of attraction, there's meditation, there's yoga, there's EFT, there's, it just goes on and on and on. And sometimes yeah. the whole thing, just gets overwhelming when you're in a dark sure. spot. What would what would you suggest to someone? A first move to help them. The the first move I would say is breathe. And it doesn't have to be a meditation breath. It doesn't have to be anything. Breathe in and breathe out, Love and do that as many times as it takes to feel a little bit better. I teach that to my kids and uh, in even mental health adults, you know, that I work with here. I'm actually in the center right now. Um, you caught me coming right off of one thing into another. So, uh, yeah, that's like literally it's like don't worry about the process. You don't have to worry about box breathing. The first step is to just breathe in and breathe back out, you know. And if you do that three or four times, you'll start to feel a little bit better, you know. Um, and like we were saying er earlier, um, like I love the law of attraction, but that's, that's really a process and it goes on with or without our knowledge. It's going on all the time. So for a conscious person, it's great to be able to use the law of attraction to get something you wish for, you want, you know what I mean? Um, so that's how you take control of your life. But if you're in such a deep, dark spot that you can't see anything for the weeds, literally it's just about taking a step up. You just need to get out of the weeds, right? Yeah, you just need yeah. to get above the weed, weeds so you can actually see what your options are. And I just suggest breathing, you know what I mean? Um, getting back to the here and now. Once again, as I was saying earlier, if you're feeling anxious, it's because you're living in the future. If you're feeling stressed, it's because you're living in the past. The here and now, there is neither of those. So anytime you feel that, just breathe, you breathe. know? Breathe, and there's you know there's all kind of places you can go from from there, but I I think that's the initial thing. And is recognize you as a human being, and and use those human beings things. It's beautiful, you know, got, Tony. You got, you got sight, you've got hearing, you've got your breath. Breath, and e even when you said that word, as soon as you said the word breathe, it's interesting. I just took a deep breath. I just went yeah, and it's like wow, because we do forget. We forget to breathe. We, we hold our breath with tension quite often. Exactly. We hold our breath or we have a panic attack and they become short. You know what I mean? Yeah. So one or the other. But if we just take a nice deep breath, you know, maybe roll our neck out, get a little of that stress out, yeah. you know, just know everything's going to be all right. There's going to be another day. It's all good. Tony Doyle, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you. And I thank you sincerely. Uh, for coming on the show. I really do. I really appreciate uh, having me on. So, and good luck with your channel. Thank Hopefully you. I can have you on my podcast coming up as well. We'll do, mate. We'll do for sure. And uh, best wishes to on the 20th of July for the uh, Manifesting Miracles with Ali O'Shea. I know you guys are going to smash it. It's going to be awesome. So, hope to see a lot of your listeners there. Thank you, mate. I hope so. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Well, there you go, Mr. Tony Doyle. What did you think of that? 
I love that gentleman. He is amazing. He's just a, he's a fountain of energy. Did, did you get that? He's just an absolute fountain of energy. Um, I'd love to know your thoughts on the interview, guys. Really, uh, yeah, if you could just please, any comments or any questions at all, please throw them. Looks like a few of you have enjoyed this, so it's great to hear this. Yeah, April says, talk, she enjoyed it. And no doubt Tony will see this at some point. Uh, so yeah, Tony, thank you very much. It was an honor to speak with you. Great, an abundance of happiness. Adele, I love that. And that, oh man, because I come off that interview just so, um, so pumped. I was like, man, this guy, this guy rocks. He's amazing, great. People have enjoyed it, inspiring. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. Yes, an addiction does take many forms. Absolutely. We can virtually be addicted to almost, well, anything. Anything. If we do, if we, we depend upon it, it becomes an addiction. Yeah. Fun and inspiring, says Eric. Now you can do the TEDx talk, Jason. You know, it's coming. I know it's a long time coming, isn't it? Uh, in, in regards to that, can I say that the talk is literally pieced together and but it's it's um, just not the right timing for me at the moment now some people could say well when is the right timing well it's going to be right soon okay I'm planning on doing a tour next year uh, coming to numerous countries across Australia and also New Zealand and USA and UK and probably Canada as well just bits and pieces not like a world tour but bits and pieces and who knows, I, might, I may tie in the TEDx talk with that. It all just depends. But regardless, I know it's going to happen. It's a matter of time. And it's, it's divine timing. And I trust. I know it's going to be okay. I trust that. So I actually have some cards that, talking about divine timing, I have the divine guidance cards. And I'm going to pick one out for us to, um, it might give us something. Ginny says, outstanding, the right timing is divine timing. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Rosemary, sometimes I listen to your stuff for hours. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll just pick out a card. So we'll just, it's these cards here. Well, that way. Oh, okay, so this one is um, strength. Oh, I've got to get the camera right there. There we go, and I'll read this out. You are about to meet someone who is faithful and loyal. Through them, you will learn how to develop these qualities more fully within yourself. Recognize the strength and tireless energy that you possess. How good is that? How good is that? I hope that gives someone something. And I know I've had a few people asking about the, you know, the possibility of the spiritual group. I was talking about a course in miracles. Uh, still working on that, um, and I, and some really strong ideas. But I will push that. I will let that known once that's available and once that's happening. I'm not sure if it's going to be weekly, fortnightly, or even monthly, but it's going to happen. And I'll keep you posted with that. And just checking some comments here. Beautiful card. Great. Tracy says, your energy is still high and gentle. Yeah, and, and Tracy, don't be fooled. Uh, like, just like you guys, you know, I have, my, I have my good times where I'm, you know, feeling peaceful and, and, and thank goodness they're happening more and more as these days progress. But, you know, of course I go through those days where I'm, I can be dark and, and, and probably miserable <laughs> to be around. Not, not often, but... You know, it's just, that's just the way it is, isn't it? Um, some say it's the contrast. Some say you don't even have to experience contrast. But uh, that's, that's the way it is. I think that's, that's life. And uh, I'm just happy to be present as much as possible, more and more every day. And, and feel, when I'm present, I feel truly connected to, to everything. Um, yeah, enough said on that. You love the shirt, Ginny? Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. 
I love this shirt too, actually. I, I really enjoy this one. And I might add too, this uh, bracelet was made from a subscriber of mine and it um, signifies I am enough. And I, I really like it and I keep that on as a reminder. If ever I'm going through a rough period of time, uh, I just that bracelet just is there, reminds me that I am enough. And uh, of course, uh, Livy, if you're watching this, thank you very much for that. I really do appreciate it. Um, yeah, some beautiful, beautiful people out there. And I, I respect each and every one of you. I really do. And Giza says, there is no light without shade. So good. Good on you, Eric. I'm glad my meditation helped you. Yeah, and you're welcome, Gina. Yeah. I've really enjoyed these moments here with you and I can't show you Dharma at the moment, my dog, because he's actually in the uh, on the other side there, uh, sitting by the heater. So he's smart. It's very cold here today in South Australia, very cold, icy. But the beautiful thing is we've been getting rain and this is, we've been in a major drought here, a major drought. And we've had two days now of steady consistent rain which is fantastic for this for these conditions and to help the to help everything beautify again and it's more than beautify to help the farmers and to help the the, the animals out there because they're just they're dying kangaroos and emus and there's just not enough food out there it's like a red dust bowl you know it's been it's been pretty rough Devaya says, can we buy one of these bracelets? Oh, well, I was given this as a gift, Devaya, so I'm not sure if you can or not, but um, maybe if uh, Livy sees this at some point, she might um, be in contact with you. We'll see. <laughs> bomb, bomb diggity. I've never heard of bomb diggity before. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my <laughs> no wonder I love my job it's so good and I love you guys and thank you very much for joining me next week we'll be doing a live guided meditation so it'll be just me joining you next week for a full live stream guided meditation and then the following week we'll continue on with some guests other guests Thank you. God bless your champions. Um, and just keep being you because you are enough. Bye for now. Bye bye. Much love.